It's a bot, right? There's no way you don't concede from here. It's a robot! I called it out! I called out what they were doing! It's a bot! Hey guys, how's it going? Now, today I was kind of like checking out HS Replay, how the new expansion was going, you know, what's popular, what are people playing? Uh, and I was checking out, you know, what what is the population of certain classes right now? Like, you know, what are people actually seeing on ladder? Um, and a really easy way to do this is looking at a card uh, like a aquatic form, for example, in Druid, and you see that it's in 95% of Druid decks. Great. Uh, and then you can check out that overall, you know, for every every single deck that's on uh, collected on HS Replay, aquatic form is in 14.7. So 14.7 decks overall play aquatic form. Aquatic form is in almost every Druid deck. That means that Druid overall might be like 15.7 two percent of the population or whatever just a guess don't correct me on the number too much uh and you can kind of go through that and check out every single class like okay so what are what are people playing um uh, kind of a funny thing with mage uh, with potion of illusion i think there's some funky stuff going on with dual class cards don't worry about it uh but you can kind of go through and check out like what is the class population of all these uh these classes overall by comparing the overall number to the uh the class play rate Nerdy stuff, whatever. Anyways, so basically I, I went through and I collected that and we kind of got an idea of like, what is the, the population of players that use a Hearthstone deck tracker? What is the population of classes um, for that subjects and subsection of the community? You know, the people that use a deck tracker, what are they playing? And you can kind of get the numbers here. You know, not a lot of Hunter, not a lot of Death Knight, Pally, uh, move up. And then we get into Warlock, Druid. These are the most popular things. Uh, you know, that people can be doing, 15%. Um, and the numbers on the left are the HS Replay populations, and the numbers on the right are the Vicious Syndicate populations. And the difference here is that HS Replay uses tracker side. So I use a deck tracker, it gets contributed. What, hey, what Vicious Syndicate does is it looks at what the opponent's playing. So the idea there is the Vicious, Syn Vicious Syndicate is trying to get an idea of the general population, you know, if I queue up a game on ladder, what is, like, a random opponent going to look like? What are the odds that a random opponent is a warlock? Um, and the idea there is obviously to remove bias. Um, players that use a deck tracker are going to be a, a different subset of the population compared to overall, and so they might favor a certain deck. Like, if a deck pops up on HS Replay, it's more likely that the people that use deck tracker will play that compared to the overall population. So that's why Vicious Syndicate do it like that. That's the way it should be done, but... Uh, alas, um, the point is that I looked at the HS replay numbers and then I compared them to the Vicious Syndicate numbers and they're mostly pretty similar. Hunter's similar, you know, Death Knight Paladin, Warrior's a little lower, Mage, uh, a little bit more from random opponents. Death, uh, Demon Hunter, very strange. Like this is a very big discrepancy. So it's a little odd that there's like this level of discrepancy with Demon Hunter. Um, obviously players that are using deck tracker, uh, seem to be favoring, um, the, uh, the, the, the Naga Demon Hunter that's kind of fresh and new. So, um, there could also be a slight difference in, you know, the time of data collection, perhaps since the expansion, obviously then they're not going to both start collecting at the exact same moment, but a little weird that there's this level of discrepancy, but you know, no, we'll note that, um, pretty similar, rogue similar, and then Druid and Warlock, you know, they're a bit more popular from humans. It seems like on deck on HS replay, compared to the random opponents on ladder from Warlock and Druid. But, you know, um, it's all pretty close mostly. Uh, but you guys might notice there's one class missing from this table. There's one class missing. It's Shaman. Now, what do you notice here? <laughs> all right. So, the players using... HS Replay's deck tracker are playing Shaman in 18% of their decks. But the players on Ladder at Legend 
or over a third of them are shamans. Over a third. Um, so what does that say? It says that the general population that you play against on ladder is very different, very, very different than the players that are using HS Replay's deck tracker. And I can give you one, one hint. Uh, uh, they may not be very human-like. These are bots. Yeah. Well, I don't know for certain that they're bots. They could just be a random, like, really big shaman population among people that don't use the, you know, people that just don't want to use the Hearthstone deck track. No, it's bots. It's bots. Um, there is a massive bot population on uh, Wild Hearthstone Legend. And it's why, like, you know, if Shaman is taking up, like, an extra 16%, it's why, like, you know, maybe Druid and Warlock aren't quite as popular um, randomly as the uh, the number from HS Replay would suggest. Um, a class like Rogue might be buoyed by, again, bots. <laughs> a lot of Pirate Rogue bots. There might be some Shadow Priest bots. There might be some Secret Mage bots. Um, Demon Hunt is kind of the one thing that's a little tough to explain. But overall... This is kind of what you're saying. You know, the most bottable classes have a slightly higher, except for Shaman, which is massive. Just an, ab an absurd number. So let's get into bots. I, let's do a bot conversation. Because that is a really crazy discrepancy. Um, and it's meaningful, right? This this is a huge difference in, uh, you know, your, your experience queuing up on ladder. Now... Bots have been around for a very long time in Hearthstone. I remember, like, when I was getting into Wild Hearthstone initially, um, there was this old post five years ago, and I, a shout-out to whoever from my chat was able to remember and find the link for this. Um, but yeah, like, there was a bot program that hit Rank 8 Legend in Wild uh, on the Chinese server back in, uh, I think it was 20... What is this? Uh, 2018, using Call to Arms Paladin. Um, they had the, the Legend screenshot, the, the bot program being run... Um, and so, like, uh, Wild Hearthstone was definitely much less competitive than it is now. It was a very different, you know, uh, era for, for Wild Hearthstone. Um, but, you know, uh, bots were running around even, you know, as far back as, as then. And they were actually doing quite well with these sort of lower skill cap decks. Um, so bots have been around for a very long time. And, you know, there's been sort of an influx uh, of bots, it seems like. Um among the, uh, you know, across ladder. Um, and there's kind of a few reasons for that. So I just kind of wanted to dig into what, what the timeline is. Why has botting become such a, uh, you know, a hot button issue uh, among, you know, content creators, especially in the wild community uh, recently over the past year or so. So basically, uh, the NetEase, which was the the Chinese company that essentially uh, acted... Um, on behalf of Blizzard, they they were in charge of Blizzard games, and that was their partnership. Okay, so they were in charge of the uh, all of Blizzard's content. Um, you know, it's how it was the the distributor for Blizzard in China, and they ended their relationship, Blizzard NetEase, uh, in November. So there started to be rumors that the Chinese server was in trouble for these Blizzard games. Uh, you know, back in like August, October, and eventually that did result in the Chinese server being shut down on January 23rd, uh, 2023. Um, so you can kind of see if you look at the legend populations, uh, there are, there are kind of like two driving forces. It seems like that have really pushed the bot population in wild hearthstone. Um, if we check out like the standard legend, uh, the number of players that make legend in standard, you can see in a 10,000, a new expansion comes out in December, uh, bam, 18,000. All right, it kind of dwindles down a little bit. Uh, it's still pretty high. Um, April rolls around, new expansion. Bam, it spikes back up, 20,000. And then you kind of see the same pattern. It drops down to about 10 in July. Not, not many people wanting to play. And then bam, back up, 20,000 in August. And so standard, you kind of see, uh, this is sort of like a little spike here, but um, it's pretty typical. Let's look at uh, what happens with wild and classic. All right? Because you can kind of see the relationship here. So... In Wild Hearthstone, um, Wild NA, uh, you would have this kind of steady number, right? Like 3,600, 3,600. And then a new expansion comes out. And so you see this kind of typical spike that you see or saw in Standard as well, right? It jumps from 3,500 to thirty uh, to 5,300. But the number spikes again in January. 
the number spikes again in January. And you can kind of see, like, standard legends go down, but the wild legend keeps climbing. Um, again, this is because the Chinese servers, there were rumors, and then eventually they got shut down in January. A lot of the Chinese players came over and started playing Wild Hearthstone on the American server. And you can kind of see that spike as the rumors happen, and then uh, it sort of stays pretty steady, like much higher than it was previously. If you look at like February and March, like these are much higher than the numbers that we were seeing in October and November. Um, and it remains pretty steady, right? Like around this 4,500 to 5,500 number. Um, even with the new expansion out in April, it kind of like stays very, very steady. But meanwhile, look at Classic. Classic for a very long time had this number around a thousand legends, you know, and no, those were not humans. <laughs> those were a lot of bots. Okay. A lot of bots. But again, the Chinese server starts to have rumors that it's shutting down around August, October, November, the net ease and uh, blizzard agreement ends. What happens in December? The number of legends and two months multiplied by four. Chinese players were uh, coming over and began botting on, you know, uh, classic servers uh, on the classic format. So the number just skyrocketed to this absurd degree and it kept going up basically, peaking at 9,605 legends in classic in June, 2023. Less than a year ago, it was like a thousand legends. There were almost as many classic legends as there were standard legends in June. And no, again, this is not because classic suddenly went through this massive resurgence. It's because the bot population was absurd. By the time you got up to that 10x MMR in classic, you were legitimately seeing 90, 95 easy percent uh, zoo bots in the format. And then the classic format got deleted. It got shut down. Um, they deleted Classic. It was a stagnant format entirely filled with bots. No one was playing it. They moved in uh, and replaced it with Twist. However, what that did, because Twist isn't exactly a bot format, uh, a bot friendly format, the bots came over to Wild. Okay, so Wild had seen this sort of steady increase uh, and then sort of plateaued in terms of the legend play rate since the Chinese players came over. It was 3,500, and now we're seeing sort of this 4,500 to 5,500 5, sort of level. The classic servers get shut down, wild player rate goes up. Legend player rate, legend ranked players go up. Then it goes up again. And now we're at this absurd number. 9,000 legends in wild. And the ratio has not really swapped this month either. So this is basically what's happened, yeah? Chinese players hear rumors that their server's getting shut down. They come over, they start botting in classic a ton. Wild sees a modest play rate increase as well. The classic server, classic format gets shut down, and then they come over and start botting in wild even more than they were previously. Um, now, we've seen posts uh, on the forums talking about how uh, back in August, uh, let, let's see, they said uh, in the August post, they, they talked about how there was some frustration with increased bots in Hearthstone. They take it very seriously. Um, We've seen an um, increase in third-party botting over several uh, the past several months. We do mass ban waves every now and again. We're working on solutions. We can't tell you more because we don't want to help the cheaters. Um, they gave an update in October, um, just over a month ago, uh, that they apparently banned 66,000 bot accounts <laughs> in August and September. Uh, but it hasn't really seemed to do anything. Right, they they've banned these August and September bot accounts, and October saw almost the exact same amount of legends, almost the exact same. Um, you ban a bot account, they just make a new bot account. Uh, makes a lot of sense to me. So that's kind of just where we're at right now, and I kind of just wanted to sort of like flag it. Um, I think that you know, uh, right now, like like I said, um. This is huge discrepancy for even shaman bots. Uh, I don't know if I actually said even shaman at any point in this video, but for for clarity, um, even shaman is the main bot deck of choice, um, and it means that like you know you're playing maybe for overall legend. Maybe the the bot number at legend overall is as high as fifteen twenty percent, and that's a lot. 
That's a lot of bots. It means that as well, that's legend as a whole. So if you're at a certain MMR bracket, if you're at a certain pocket, like if you're in like that 9x MMR range at legend, you might be a little bit lower. Uh, you might like meme around a little bit once you hit legend, something like that. Uh, and you start getting those like rank five floor bots. If you said you were playing against 40% shaman bots, even shaman bots, I'd believe you. I don't see the, quite that much, not even close really. But if you said you saw 35, 40%, in that kind of MMR range, I'm not going to say you're lying. Like, yeah, probably. Um, and that sucks. Like, Hearthstone is a really fun game, or is the most fun, um, when you get kind of a variety of experiences. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're playing against an OP deck over and over again, or you're playing against a bot deck over and over again, or if you're playing against every single deck summoning patches on turn one uh, over and over again. Hearthstone is not as fun when you get the same experiences over and over and over and over. And that sort of uh, play rate issue is always the biggest driver of um, stale metas that aren't particularly fun. And I think that's the biggest problem with botting, um, you know, is that it just makes a, a very stale experience if this is all that you're seeing. If it was like once every blue moon, I, I don't think it would be nearly as much of an issue. But if you are seeing even Shaman bots over and over and over again, or Pyro bots uh, for that matter, um, it really does stale, make the experience a lot more stale. Um, it's also fun as well in Hearthstone to, you know, that human element is very important. Um, you know, you want to play against humans, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think that's what most people would like. Uh, for a lot of people, you know, some people might argue that there's no real difference, that their opponent's kind of like a blind thing and it doesn't really matter. But I think that misplays and funny moments and, you know, both players reacting to RNG or, you know, watching the opponent have to think and figure out something. Um, it just adds a nice little touch to Hearthstone and taking away that that touch and that sort of connection in a game that is otherwise largely single player in many respects um, is a huge detriment. So I hope that there is more to be done with botting. I think that the team needs to implement ways to you know, acknowledge when you've reported someone and the, the report has been successful, a bot has been banned. Um, I, I think that, you know, there's real question marks about whether you should just balance the bot decks, whether you should make it so the bot decks aren't as good. Like if there is a really successful bot deck, should you just gut it? Should you just gut it and make it sure that, um, you know, they, they have to make some, they have to play something else. Um, or that if they are going to be able to bot a Hearthstone deck, that it won't be as successful, and so they won't be able to at least make their way up the ladder. Um, I don't know. I think there's a very reasonable argument for that. But I just thought I'd flag it and sort of like talk about the history of bots and what I'm currently seeing on ladder um, and how, yeah, it does make for a really harsh experience. So hope you guys enjoyed and found this informative. Um, hope something changes in the future. And yeah, I'll see you guys all, see you guys all next time. All right. Have a good one. Bye.